anthrops are half animal, half human. And when you get into altered states of consciousness, those are the beings that meet you. He talks about ayahuasca experiences, which is a medicinal plant that you take in the Amazon jungle, but trans dancing, there's all kinds of ways to access altered states. Now, for sure, the Egyptians were doing that, and there's much evidence about that. But so maybe these beings were going between back and forth between the other planets. X marks the spot. I mean, one of the things about the pyramids is you can see them from space. In Google Earth, you can see them from 20 miles away, um, and they reflect light and the shapes of them, so you always know where you are. So, I mean, there's something very dramatic here. And you'll see reptilian-faced beings every once in a while on the temple walls in other places in Egypt. But this is like a storyboard, a, a massive storyboard of much more than that. And I can't tell you how surprised I was to see it because of the fact that it's Abydos. Or sorry, Dendera, but Abydos also has the ancient ancient. That's a remarkable. Does any of this echo the work of what Zechariah Sitchin did yeah. with the Sumerians? Yeah, I'm Wonderful. thinking. Yeah. And if you go past back far enough in terms of, you know, remote viewing and past, I don't know if remote viewing is accessing all of it, but certainly I know, and I know for myself that there's a storyline in there that includes the reptilian beings. Does any of it um, echo Genesis in the Bible? Well, the biblical story is always up for interpretation. Yes. And so, yes, no. How about that for an answer? (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you're running for politics, Carmen. Yes, no. (laughs) Well, I don't want to make too many comments about the Bible. (laughs) You know, I know you don't like to speculate without having some evidence or proof, but I've got to tell you, to be able to see these objects, these symbols, uh, something happened during this era a yeah. long, long time ago. And these people depicted it. They drew it. They, it. It's truly remarkable. Well, I don't think we can argue it now. Like, the ceiling is evidence. You know, like when I did my last interview with you, I didn't want to use, you know, the A word for alien or, you know, presuppose. That, but, you know, as time's going on and there's disclosure and every, so many people have stories and there's, you know, sooner or later, I think we have to explain this. Well, and, you know what? That's the key phrase. Sooner or later, we do have to explain this. Uh, we can't just scarf it off as something, you know, that, that doesn't exist. It's real. It's there. It's been witnessed. You see it. And people have to start interpreting this uh, and simply say, you know, it's it, the most common denom- denominator is probably what it is. And if these people are, are doing crafts, flying craft and submarines and reptilian-looking humans, then that's probably what was roaming around this planet a long time ago. Well, and where did they live? In the stars. You know, what do we see in Starry Night Pro, the traveling through the constellations? What does the, we, we talked about this last time, Walter Crettenden was talking about the sun being in a binary star system. Right. And when I plugged it into Starry Night, poof, here we go. It's all rotating around the extra galactic grid has its center point as Sirius and the rest of it rotates around it. I mean, this is very serious. But it fits. Now, there are certain, you know... And don't forget, add in the, you know, the Dogon tribe, right? Oh, yeah. And you, the, you know, And, and when that visitation? Is, they kept to themselves. They didn't mix with human culture. When Islam came into Egypt, they walked away. They walked all the way to Mali, and they started to, you know, repopulate themselves. Mm-hmm. They only have a verbal language. They have written symbols. The Dogon priests can still utter some of the phrases of the hieroglyphic-looking text. Now, what we see everywhere in Egypt is dimensional doorways, doors within doors within doors. There's the Serapium that they've got locked shut. Do you know what that is? No, tell me. Well, the Serapium is at Saqqara, and it's 
the entrance is right beside the Department of Antiquities office there. And Saqqara is a place that's got some very, very interesting things, but they won't let you go anywhere. And, you know, over my, since 1977, I've been, you know, going around by myself, trying, you know, trying to find out what I can. And the rules have changed along the way. And there were times when we can go into the Serapium. And what it is, is 22 huge sarcophagi that are 20 tons base and five tons, tons, we're talking 10,000 pounds, covers, no inscriptions, granite, that go around in an oval in these enclaves. They tried to move one, and they, they, it, it got stuck in the hallway. They say that they were found full of ibis bulls, but a bull isn't that shape. It's just the way they say that they use bull sacrifice for the crystal bulls. In, in, in Abu Ghraib. I mean, a bull doesn't fit in there either. I mean, they're just grasping at straws. And maybe at some point in the more recent times in the dynasties, somebody put something else in there. But there is absolutely no way that that's what it was at the beginning. And I've brought people down there who are incredibly sensitive. And on more than one occasion, okay, see, I know what I think, but I've kept my cards pretty close here. I haven't been talking about this. Over the, all these years, I've just like, there's, you know, been waiting for a chance to explain it in a way that had a context to say it in. And it's been said that they were the teleportation chambers. That there was a liquid huh? that would have been in something that looked like mercury. People have envisioned this silvery liquid substance, and there was a beam me up, Scotty, dematerialize, rematerialize. Now, last time I was on, we talked about the cities, S I D H I S, from the Vedic culture in India, which talked about the transmutation of the atom. We know that science fiction is more science than fiction, right? And that once the high-level initiates were able to, to transmute the atom, which means in, in terms of water, the hydrogen and the oxygen molecule would blow apart, and then the two um, elements would function in a different way. Well, we're 70% water, so we blow the molecule apart inside ourselves. Then... Telepathy, manifestation, levitation, which is anti-gravity, bilocation, teleportation, and alchemy were all possible because all of them have a similar function. That they're do you, doing something different, but they all require the ability to transmute the atom. Do you think there might be a portal there? Absolutely, I do. I'm saying that a bit too quickly. And the portal was reversed, like a lot of the, I'm saying way too much here, all of the energetic work, though, that we were doing, there came a point at Saqqara where it was, it was so over-controlled by, I'm going to say, them, the reptilian beings, and their time is done. And that's part of the significance of 2012, like the planet was taken over, and I think that Zachariah Sitchin's War of Gods and Men and the planet was taken over for the period of time from 3113 BC to 2012. Their time is done. There was a transition period at the beginning, and there's a transition period now. And that portal's been reversed now. Where did they go, Carmen? Well, they're infiltrated. They're still here. They're still running. You know what they're running. I mean, they're, they've got, they still have a lot of... They've transformed, haven't they? Well, they, they're walking among us. They're shapeshifters. All right, let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. The website, pyramidcode.com. Just fascinating discussion with Carmen Boulder. She's been to Egypt more than 20 times, and she's come back this time with an incredible story that we're sharing with you right now at Coast to Coast AM. If you need to email me, george at coast2coastam.com. More Coast to Coast continues in just a moment. Teleportation chambers in the pyramids? That's fascinating stuff. We'll be back with Carmen Bolter in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie. Carmen, let's talk a little bit more about the teleportation devices there. That fascinates me. And then we'll get into some more of your travels. Uh, And you said there was a liquid. So you think this liquid was used for whatever they were doing? Well, now, let's clarify, because at the break you said in the pyramid. No. Underground, in a place called the Serapium, is where these huge black granite sarcophagi are, sarcophagi for lack of better words, but in the Great Pyramid, they, they thought that was a burial sarcophagus, but it's not. Okay. And so when they opened the Great Pyramid, they found it full of white powder. 
So they were doing all kinds of alchemical stuff and scientific science fiction as we call it 